Hey folks, it's been a while since I've done a video, uh, but I think I'm going to do a couple uh, about some of the challenges of remodeling older buildings, uh, which uh, me and my wife have been doing for about the last 10 years. Uh, we do a lot of masonry buildings. Uh, this one here that we're completely gutting uh, is a 1948 fourplex. And uh, there's some unique challenges with that. I don't think there's a lot of people out there on YouTube that are going to be terribly interested in this, but there's a small handful of you that will be very interested in some of this. So I, I have a very select target audience for this. But one of the challenges uh, for demoing, and we're taking out the tub and the surround, um, there's a 75 year old. Uh, installation here everything in this place is original um, including the water lines and the gas lines and the knob and tube electric and it's all coming out but one of the challenges is how they did um, masonry uh, tile back then was a system called mud bed and this was before the days of hardy backer boards that we're all familiar with now uh, but back then you can see, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what it was by looking at the stick frame. This is at the head of the uh, bath shower with the hardware. But you can see on the back they did this wire mesh. And then they did about a two inch layer of this very dense cement, um, which they called mud bed. And that provided the surface that they actually put the tile onto. And so on a stick frame wall, you just you cut the wire frame from behind and you, you hit it with a sledgehammer and you take it out in pieces. It's not too complicated. But where things get interesting is when, um, let's go and take a look at this over here. This is the edge of our shower surround. Everything in these older buildings was for seemingly short people. Um, <laughs> this. This uh, surround is uh, at about five feet five, uh, and oddly enough, that's exactly where the shower head was too. So, those of us that are six two, um, you know, kind of look at this and go, "Was everybody short in the '40s?" Um, but they they use mud bed here as well, but this is masonry, so the behind this paint is brick, uh, and cinder block brick. And uh, so one of the challenges is how do you get this mud bed off the masonry wall cleanly without damaging the masonry wall and without taking days to chip it off with, uh, you know, by hand with a chisel. And uh, I had actually called some uh, demo professionals, some people that, that specialized in taking out fireplaces and things along those lines. They had never dealt with this before, and the one guy came out and took a look at it and was not interested. And <laughs> so I kind of had to figure it out on my own. Uh, my first technique was I grabbed my 30 pound jackhammer and just started jackhammering it out. That was very bad. It chiseled the, the masonry underneath it badly, and it, it, the mud bed came out in little chips, and it was taking forever. So um, I hit upon another method that works much better and I've done a couple of these now. So I'm going to show you that technique and then I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, as I get it out and uh, uh, how it works. So for the handful of people out there that are going to be dealing with this, hopefully this helps you out. So step one is uh, I'm using my Makita masonry saw. Um, it's a little five inch <clears throat> saw that's designed for masonry, um, so it's geared a little lower, uh, with, a, with a decent masonry uh, blade on here. And what I'm going to do is I got it to the maximum depth. Um, it doesn't really matter if I, if I leave little, little uh, cut marks on the top of the cinder block underneath it, if, if that happens, because we're going to cover this with, with hardy backer board. I just don't want to damage it too terribly badly. Scarring, little scarring isn't going to make that big of a difference. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut all along and I'll go about every two tiles worth and I'll, I'll do a, a cut through and then I'll cut up and uh, we're making rectangles. And uh, so the theory of operation here, the, how this, this works, is by providing these cuts and these channels 
when I come at it with uh, my Bosch hammer drill with the with a paddle on the end of the paddle bit, and you you come at it and you you're vibrating it essentially um, with the with the hammer, and um, it allows each of these individual chunks to vibrate and it gives it room to move and they actually just pop off the masonry uh, usually every once in a while you get a stubborn one but for the most part you just go through and you just pop 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 and it actually makes a fairly clean masonry wall when you're done um, it also goes a lot quicker uh, than chiseling it in pieces and, and, uh, and coming off it. And it's generally all less work. Now it does create a lot of dust. I have a dust abatement system here, which uh, I'll attach onto here. It's a vacuum. And I wear a, a PAPR, um, which is a positive air pressure respiratory system. When I'm doing demos on these old buildings, I don't mess around with just a regular mask. I have a HEPA PAPR. When I'm pulling ceilings down, and you know who knows what was in this bizarre insulation in the 40s and I don't want to find out um, so uh, I invested in a, in a papper with a with a hard helmet and a, uh, a reinforced face plate you know so stuff can fall on my head and, and whatnot but uh, um, I'm gonna go get all that on and then do some cuts I'm not gonna film that because it's loud and it's going to be so dusty you probably won't be able to see me. Uh, so, but once I get done with the cut, we'll come down and take a look. And then uh, I'll get the hammer drill out and we'll, we'll start popping some of the, the chunks off. So now that I got it cut, you can see I took a couple of the blocks off here. And uh, it's in reasonably good shape. Um, little mix. Well, like I say, there'll be hardy backer board over this. So let me go ahead and just take one of these off just to kind of show you how it works. You get your paddle bit right on the surface of the masonry and tuck it up underneath your mud bed. So you can see, you can hear as the pitch change, as this thing is vibrating itself off the wall, it gets a lower pitch and then just pops off. So that's generally what's going to happen as I go all the way around. Um, I'll finish this up and get it clean and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Um, I may put a, a shot in after we put the new tub in and we have new tile surround and all that other good stuff just so you can go ooh ah. Um, but uh, hopefully if you run into this mud bed, this technique will help you out um, and then leave a, a little cleaner um, salvageable without having to replace, you know, a bunch of your masonry underlayment and uh, get it all out and uh, be able to replace it with something better. So here we are just about done. A couple little pieces in the corner. But uh, you can see the tub is all nicely filled with uh, big blocks of mud bed and tile. So uh, I'll just be able to put uh, some hardy backer up over that and then uh, do larger field tile for our uh, new tub. But next up is uh, clean up and then cutting that 1940s steel tub up, which the first person that uh, <laughs> Sends me an email saying, oh, just use a sledgehammer. Uh, gets a free plane ticket to come out and show me. The 1940s steel tubs are considerably more stout than the 1960s era steel tubs that I took out in Seattle. So these ones have to be cut up and they go through some blades and they are wicked heavy. So that'll be fun. That'll be the next thing. <laughs>